I analyzed how the animatronics and Five Nights at Freddy's work, so we all can understand exactly what we're up against. Cause if the research and writing skills that my science degrees bashed into my brain tell us anything, it's that the technology that went into the animatronics is actually worse than any of us thought. The Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics are so advanced, seemingly so far ahead of their time, that they are more so full-blown automatons. But the technology that's gone into these things isn't necessarily far away, and just maybe it exists right now. The mini animatronics we encounter were conceived and established by the robotic industries of Fazbear Entertainment and Afton Robotics. These things though are technically animatronics, simply being a term coined by Disney that means animated electronic. Robots look and feel like machines while animatronics are made to look more alive, so individuals can connect to them on an emotional basis, often being used for entertainment. Like droids and robots, the animatronics don't have a limit to the technology that can go into them, and exactly what they can be programmed to do. And oh boy, is their technology made to do a lot. Starting with one of the most advanced inventions that these things possess, we arrive at how they actually see you. If an animatronic is looking at an object or a person, it can see and instantly recognize exactly what it's looking at, thanks to its pair of onboard RGB cameras that are typically located in their eyes that collect any visible light in the area and quickly convert it into an image. Specifically, an RGB camera stands for red, green, and blue camera, as these are the three primary colors that can be combined to make all other colors, or more so specifically the colors within a human's visible light spectrum. You see, visible cameras like the ones likely on the animatronics are designed to replicate human vision, so they can easily see everything you can, but this also means that they have the same drawbacks. Just like the human eye, these RGB cameras require light to see. Their performance is also greatly reduced by conditions such as haze, smoke, heat waves, and fog, and this limits their ability to recognize specific shapes and whether or not it's an individual that's standing still in front of them or a random object. This is why visible cameras often need to be paired with their own flashlight of sorts. But despite this setback, the animatronics have something else something that helps them pinpoint any target. Rather than just having a simple RGB camera, the animatronics instead rely on another piece of state-of-the-art technology that makes running from one of these machines a lot more difficult than you might think. This would be thanks to the special 3D depth sensor. This piece of technology allows the animatronics to sense and retrieve a full 3D map of its surrounding area and everything in it. In Ensuring that the animatronic doesn't suddenly start walking into walls off a bridge or fail to find the most convenient path to its target. And putting this three-dimensional map together with the data it's collected from its RGB camera means that an animatronic can easily pinpoint the location of any object it already knows is there, detect when a new object has appeared within its 3D scanner's range, and instantly recognize whether or not that new object is a box, toy, or human. And it's taken some serious Ness on Fazbear's part to make their animatronics look and feel real, especially to approaching children, meaning that when an animatronic like Foxy sees a kid approaching him out of the crowd, he enters his low curiosity or engaged state, slowly turning his gaze onto them without making any hard stops that would give away his true robot identity. Foxy and the others are able to dictate exactly how long they should look at that child before glancing in other directions or darting their eyes between other fixation points on that specific child. If a second child happens to walk up to one of them, they will smoothly turn their gaze towards that person and then blend their glances between the two, even at times mirroring the surveyed person's body language, their blinking, their happy mood, all so that they feel more real, more natural, more welcoming. But the FNAF animatronics do more than merely recognize and mimic people. Whether it be one of the possessed originals and certainly the later glam rocks, they all were built with the capability to remember items and individuals they've seen and interacted with before. So if someone an animatronic has seen before enters their view, they become more triggered, to now enter a higher curiosity or acknowledged state. What they do next depends on how their previous experience with that individual went. 
moment. They can even assess exactly what that person is likely to be doing in that moment, whether or not they're a threat and how best to stop them. But if that's not very interesting, then let's talk about what these animatronics are even made of. You see, the exterior of the animatronics are relatively harmless, with the originals likely being made out of silicone with fur padding, and later models being either plastic, porcelain, or snuggles. And that's great to know if you ever find yourself face to face with one of these things, cause the real threat to worry about is the endoskeleton. The endoskeleton is commonly thought to be made out of steel due to modern day animatronics. However, modern day animatronics really don't move at all, and certainly not like many of the FNAF animatronics. The thing about steel is it's as strong as it is heavy. This means that while the endoskeletons of the early animatronics could have been made with steel, it's likely that even some of them and later animatronics are made out of either a lighter weight metal like aluminum or more likely titanium. Since titanium, while being lighter than steel, is also very strong and durable, meaning that Fazbear Entertainment could make the animatronics even lighter by using less titanium in their designs without sacrificing too much of the animatronic's strength and maneuverability. But what really makes these animatronics stand out and so scary is how fast they can move. You see, in order for one of these guys to detect, target, and then sprint after you, they would need to have a wide, and I mean a large series, of pneumatic cylinders that would produce the force necessary to move their limbs and face by converting compressed air into force, making them generally quiet, while at the same time later and even faster animatronics would use silent high torque motors, with all of them having larger, stronger motors or cylinders in their legs and arms than they would in, say, their fingers and eyes. And then there's the animatronics' voices. You see, while they have a voice box of sorts within them, and possibly small speakers on the outside of their body to produce their voice, that doesn't mean a whole lot by itself. Rather, it's the animatronics' speech synthesizers that are the real danger, and leads us towards the biggest threat that the FNAF animatronics have to offer. And if my over-researched senses have to say anything, it's that you don't want to be caught with your pants down when it comes to the animatronics' most dangerous aspect. This would of course be their not-so-futuristic intelligence, their onboard computer, or should I say, their advanced AI. An AI that is so intelligent that they can easily understand and speak in any language, recognize the sound and speech patterns of a person's voice, and just as easily mimic any voice they wish. But that's just the simple stuff. The animatronics intelligence is and works similar to the neural networks of a human brain, allowing them to recognize and correlate patterns, come up with new solutions to problems, and continuously learn and improve. Specifically, the animatronics don't just have the same machine learning that has become associated with today's AIs. They instead have what is known as deep learning. You see, while machine learning, where over time an AI learns from its experience with the inputs and prompts that one or many humans give it, that at times needs to be manually corrected by a team of humans going in and updating that AI, deep learning is a whole other monster that bypasses the need for any human intervention completely. So you see, in a machine equipped with deep learning, and in the animatronics case, a rather sophisticated deep learning network, their network only needs to be given some form of raw data for it to analyze. The network will quickly then go to work processing and deriving everything about whatever it has been given to look at, detailing everything about what it is, its strengths and weaknesses, possible problems it could encounter, as the network manually comes up with all sorts of complex problems and solutions around that set of data. Then, all all the animatronic needs to be given is a directive in order to act out, and it will swiftly go to work seeing how to best carry out its order. And all of this can be given by a single scientist, by a single person. In fact, the AI on later animatronics like Roxy and Glamrock Freddy are so advanced that they can either mimic or from what we see, seem to come up with their own thoughts, have their own motivations, sense of self-preservation, preservation, right and wrong, and above 
all display real feelings. As we see Freddy go well out of his way to save Gregory during security breach, constantly fearing for his friend's safety, while Roxy is seen crying by herself over her ruined appearance, who later smiles at Cassie telling her happy birthday, remembering her party from the year before. Later showing up and sacrificing herself to save Cassie from a new threat, all stemming from an extremely complex AI. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. Despite their similar coding, each of the animatronics has their own inherent strengths and weaknesses to watch out for, as Bonnie is the most intelligent, while Chica is the most persistent in staying after her target. So you might want to check out this video for more of the crazy science behind our favorite games and characters. See you in the next one!